I have found the perfect alternative to the Raspberry Pi 5 that is this Radzak Dragon Q6A. It beats the Pi 5 in every possible benchmarks. Geekbench score shows nearly 80% better performance, higher NVMe speeds, memory bandwidth tests show faster RAM access and to add to this, you can also run Windows on it. It's pretty much equivalent to the Radza X4 in terms of performance which has an Intel N100 CPU. This board has a Qualcomm QCS6490 that provides 1 core at 2.7GHz, 3 cores at 2.4GHz, 4 cores at 1.9GHz and a built-in Qualcomm Adreno 643 GPU supporting Vulkan, OpenGL, OpenCL and DirectX. It also has AI computing power up to 12 tops with Hexacon Tensor Accelerator and Hexacon Coprocessor 2.0. It also has an LPDDR5 RAM that supports 5500 mega transfers per second, an onboard M.2 M key slot for NVMe that provides PCI Express Gen 3 speeds with two lane connectivity, EMMC or UFS module connector, micro SD card slot. MIPI CSI connector for camera, MIPI DSI connector for display and two bigger CSI connectors with two lane connectivity for cameras. Then we have one USB 3.1 port, three USB 2.0 port, a gigabit ethernet RJ45 port and an RTC battery connector. Then we have a full-fledged HDMI port, USB-C port for power input supporting PD power supply, 3.5mm audio jack and finally Wi-Fi 6 with Bluetooth 5.4 for wireless connectivity. Now initially when I got this board, I ran it barebone without any heatsink but I noticed that when I was running VK Mark test to check Vulkan support, the board would just shut down because the GPU temperatures were hitting high levels. So I installed this small 25mm heatsink fan which is actually meant for a Raspberry Pi 4 and I powered it via the GPIO pins. In terms of OS, we have Ambient with standard support, Radza provides their own Radza OS based on Ubuntu sources and we now also have preview support for running Windows on this. Now to install Windows, I flashed this custom firmware that provides UEFI support. I downloaded Windows for ARM from the Microsoft website, prepared an installation USB and then via the UEFI interface, I was able to start Windows 11 installation. Once the installation completed, I installed the driver packages provided by Radza and with this, Windows officially was running on this small single board computer. Now my experience was pretty smooth considering that the support for Windows on this board was still in the preview state. I saw that Chrome did support hardware video decoding so I played a YouTube video and it ran smoothly at 1080p and also switching to 4K resolution, it had no problems handling the stream. Apart from this, Ethernet was working but Bluetooth and Wi-Fi drivers were not yet available and this will be probably released anytime soon. I also checked the onboard NVMe speeds and I was able to get really good speeds here. Now considering this small heatsink fan that I used, on Windows, the idle temperatures were about 47 degrees Celsius. I stress tested it for about 5 minutes and the temperatures grew to about 90 degrees Celsius and on further stress testing it for 10 minutes, the temperatures went no further than 92 degrees Celsius and the CPU did not throttle at all. Now on Ambient, at idle, the temperatures were about 43 degrees Celsius and on stress testing it for about 10 minutes, the temperatures did not cross 80 degrees. So this small heatsink fan did definitely a good job here. Now Radza still is working on an official heatsink for this port and it should be available anytime soon. Now on Ambient, I ran GL Mark II test to check OpenGL support and I got very good score which was nearly two times as compared to the Raspberry Pi 5. Similarly, on the VK Mark test for checking Vulkan, the score was nearly three times that of the Raspberry Pi 5, which was really good. I then ran SysBench test to benchmark the CPU for calculating prime numbers up to 20,000 for every 100,000 requests. This board completed the task in under 17 seconds, which was nearly 50% faster compared to the Raspberry Pi 5. Next to test the LPDDR5 memory performance, I ran the tiny membench test which showed that the performance in some cases was nearly twice that of the Raspberry Pi 5. 
Now to collect all these benchmark results, it does take quite some time. So to help this channel grow, consider subscribing to the channel and also hit that like button to help the YouTube algorithm recommend this video to others also. Next, I also checked the Ethernet performance and it gave me about 942 megabits per second for sending and receiving data. And for Wi-Fi, I saw speeds of about 170 megabits per second. I checked the NVMe speeds on Ambient and I was getting lower speeds of about 750 megabytes per second as I was expecting higher values since it was using PCI Express Gen 3 speeds with 2-lane connectivity. I switched to the Radsa OS and I did get higher speeds here which I would say is pretty much in line with Gen 3 speeds with 2-lane connectivity. I also tested this UFS 3.1 module on this board and it gave me better speeds on Ambient compared to testing it on the Radza OS. Then I connected a USB 3 to NVMe adapter to the USB 3.1 port and I saw it was connected to the 5000 megabit bus indicating USB 3.1 Gen 1 speeds. I checked the transfer speeds using flexible I.O. test and I got speeds of about 395 megabytes per second for writing data. Now one of my tests is running Home Assistant and checking the Voice Assistant performance on it. I set up Home Assistant using Docker and also set up Whisper and Piper using Docker with the small int 8 model and on giving a voice command Whisper converted speech to text in about 4 seconds which was now 50% faster in comparison to the Raspberry Pi 5. Now at idle this board with the NVMe, UFS module and the fan connected to it would consume about 3.9 to 4 watts of energy but when I was stress testing this, the energy usage jumped to about 9.5 to 10 watts of energy with the fan, NVMe and the UFS module still connected to it. I have documented all these test results on my website so that you can check them out in more detail. I have provided a link into the description below. Now considering all these tests, I was really impressed by the performance and with this I can consider that the Radza Dragon Q6A as the true single board computer that can definitely beat the Raspberry Pi 5 in terms of performance. Now you can use this board even to run AI models on this and Radza has provided a detailed guide for this on their website. Apart from this, you can run windows on it for normal usage and probably some light gaming also. Or you could mount it on your server rack as I did here to say run Kubernetes or any other server based applications. I'm planning to run Kubernetes on a set of these small single board computers so subscribe to the channel to see that video when it is out. Now in terms of price, this device costs about 90 euros on AliExpress plus shipping and on Ares you can get it for 70 euros for the same 8GB variant. I have added links into the description below to buy this board. Next I'll be exploring this Pi Zero size SBC from Radza that provides PCI Express via this FPC connector. So subscribe to the channel to see that video when it is out. Now if you like to see such in-depth videos about single board computers and about making your home smart then make sure to subscribe to the channel as well as hit that like button for more such videos to come. Now you can support this channel by becoming a Patreon member or you could just buy me a coffee. Till then take care and I will see you in my next one.